Hey guys, what's up? From the laziest artist around, I want to show you today how you can draw your own self-portrait using a tablet and the Procreate application, even if you don't have a picture of yourself. So you go to Pinterest and pick any picture of a drawn girl. Which one do you like? Oh, wow, this one is really pretty. I'll save it. Actually, I saved this girl beforehand. I really liked her smile, and the drawing is beautiful. Then download this magical app. Sadly, it is not free. If you find a free version or alternative, please let me know and hit the plus sign. Just click on the plus and then proceed with Leonardo DiCaprio. Insert this picture, find those photos that you like, where you like yourself and your facial features are clear, it needs to show that. I already uploaded a few pictures and here it needs to show her laughing. This is her laughing, so we choose it and click. Create the project, and now of course it's a bit clunky to do this, but with the help of it, look, Natasha is laughing, now we save it. Save it, and off to draw, I'll show you everything. I go into the Procreate application. There I can choose any tail size and insert the photo. You see, insert the photo, choose the photo I already made and stretch it to my screen size because of the brush size. The right side brush icon is selected. It automatically comes with a huge amount of them. You can choose any. And in the top right circle, you choose the color that you want to sketch and along the lines of our drawing. We need to sketch the main features eyes, smile, nose, hands, direction of hair. And once we've sketched, we need to carefully select the brushes for the body. We're going to draw the body right now. And there are two squares next to the color. Yes, those are layers. Create a new layer and draw over our sketches, because if we were to draw over these sketches that we made, then we will erase it. Therefore, create a new layer. And I just line my drawing. Yes, the one I need, face and hand, and combined it with one color. Now we press on the wrench. I inserted the reference of the picture that I'll be drawing and click on the reference. It copies the drawing to where you poke with your finger. It copies the color and the color appears on the right side. And this thing here, firstly, it contains brushes. I don't even know the actual name. But I'll show it to you using an arrow. It has the texture of the brush we're drawing, but it softens everything. Now our task is to move color spots, and thanks to this little thing next to the brush, it's simply to soften our sketches. I mean, this is some kind of magical thing. If you know the correct name, please correct me, so our task now. The only task is to simply apply the color spots that are on our reference and soften them with our magic wand, the brush. You can also choose whichever you want based on character and texture. Chill out. Sit. Learn what type of brushes are there. They even transfer the roughness of the skin. You can decide which one you prefer. I've chosen mine. If you want, I'll send you the link. Not the link, but a screen of the brushes I like, because there's a huge quantity of them. And I don't even use half of the brushes there. Right now our task is to make the underlayer as similar as possible to the color spots in our reference. So just poke the face of the reference. Yep. Repeat the color and apply the spot. Then take the magic stick and, with the same texture as my brush, smooth the drawing, meaning there's nothing complicated about it. You just need to know how to draw further on your, you know, how this skill will Will grow is when you remove this layer of sketching that is helping us, keeping everything in order. When you remove this layer of sketching and draw yourselves in color as needed to not have that cartoony outlook. But that's the next level for now. The main task for you now is to just test and try out these brushes, how they work. Which brushes are the best for drawing hair? Which ones work better for skin? Which brushes are better for drawing different textures? There are even reflections of water, tree texture. Meaning there's a huge amount of everything you can't just imagine.
There are even components like water glimmers and tree texture. Well, I mean, there's a massive amount of stuff you can't even imagine, so you just have to play around with it for a bit. These are the main keys I use, just remember to keep track of the layers. Yes, they are located near the color, close to the color circle. It could be a square-like traditional palette or a circular one with colorful hair. Now we're moving on to hair. How I draw hair. I start with the dark tones. I choose a dark area. I select uh, the appearance of a lock which is there. There are straight sections and I start by detailing the darker areas with the hair texture I like so it looks natural. Don't draw them. You know how people outline strands, draw a dark tip um, and a light and dark beginning? Yeah, see, I drew a little droplet and then darkened it at the top and darkened it at the bottom. And in the middle, I'll have a different color. So vary with different color patches. Don't try to draw with one color. That's bad and looks cartoonish. Mix up your colors. Experiment. Even if you think these colors don't match, you'll then take this magic wand. It also softens the texture. And all will match. And don't forget about the light falling on your face and your hair. See, my light is coming from the left to the right, so my left side is much lighter. And there's a glow on the cheeks and a glow on the nose. This is in the references too. By the way, I decided to remove the cap. I'll just have hair, so keep in mind this color patch. Don't forget. Now I'm just filling in the color of the hair and then with our magic wand, I choose the hair texture and smoothen it. however I want it in the drawing. By the way, it's important to follow the direction. If we aim the brush randomly, it will smoothen it badly and unattractively. Here, the important thing is to follow the direction of the hair, which is helped by the sketch we made at the start. Then, when you've finished applying the color, choose a brush you like for strands to make it look like they're in motion. Make the strands as lively as possible. You know, make them seem as though they're falling on the face and as clips in our two folders. You can remove the sketch and see what's missing or leave it in. Also, you can merge all your layers, take our magic wand, which is also for the lazy, and soften the line that we sketched. From the start, you copied it. With it softened, it will seem magical, as if you drew it yourself. You can soften it or remove it, but removing is tougher if you don't know how to draw. I mean, when you remove it, you'll have to repeat all these lines by yourself. But if you don't know how to do this, leave the sketch you drew and carefully smoothen it with our magic wand. Don't create a messy outline, smoothen it in the right direction. From here on, you need persistence and patience, your own patience. Right now, the work of underpainting is done, and I'm generally satisfied with how it looks. But if you're more meticulous and demanding, you can spend more time refining the details. Hours can go into perfecting hair, embellishments, and highlights on the skin. You can sit and draw all this, and it comes down to how much time you're willing to spend on your drawing. By the way, about the tattoo, I took this tattoo design from Pinterest and inserted it the same way we inserted the photo. Then I just erased the extra parts with an eraser, but remember to do this in another layer. Don't do it on the layer with your drawing because you'll erase the drawing itself. So play around, experiment, and check out how cool it is to leave your signature. But only you'll know it's there. If all this is helpful, hit like.